Hi, this video is to show you just one way of implementing a one-dimensional array of records in live code. What I have in this notepad file, just a text file, I have some pieces of data that relate to stock. So I have a hat and I have 16 hats in stock. Each hat is £12.95. This is the image ID associated with the hat and that is whether or not it's currently discounted. So shoes, 35 pairs, that's the cost, image ID and whether or not it's discounted. And in fact I have eight items of stock so if you scroll down I've got a hoodie, a t-shirt, a bag, some socks, sweater and gloves. So that's my notepad file and the first thing I want to do is to read this data in from the file into live code. And once I've read it in, the way I've set this up, it will sit in one variable here called temp data and you can see hidden in amongst these uh, return or new line characters you've got your hat, 16 hats, 1295 per hat that's the image idea, true, and there are my shoes, and so on and so forth. So each of these uh, pieces of data are separated by the new line character or the return character. So the next thing that I want to do is to split the data up so that it's actually temp data becomes a one dimensional array with each of the pieces of data in their own single location. And from that I want to gather that there are eight stock items. Then I'm going to take that data and I'm going to rearrange it into my own visualization of the data which is this one-dimensional array of records called stock item which has eight elements. Each element is a record and each record has got five fields. So I'm going to take the hat from here, put it there, the 16, put it there, and so on. I don't need to do that. I could leave the data in temp data and just work with the data from within there. But the programming of this would be really quite difficult, quite unreadable. And uh, I'm going to take this step so that it becomes much more manageable from a programming point of view. Just before we look at the live code program, uh, I just want to reiterate the fact that I have a one-dimensional array. Each element is of the same type. It's a record. But within the record, I'm allowed different types of value. And that's the key thing about a record, is that it does allow you different types. Whereas array structures, um, usually, uh, the elements must be the same type of data. So let's go and look at the live code program. So I'll just drop that down there. And on the front end here, I've got load data, save data, display data, and I can clear my fields. So the code that I have on the load data button, I have on mouse up and these are the local variables that I will need to carry out the load of the data from the file. So here's my temp data, that's the temporary holding place that I showed you in the Word document. I need to make a link between the program and the external file, so that's file choice, that's my variable holding the address of the file. And I need this local variable count to count into the temporary data. So by that I mean count is going to go 1, count is 2, count is 3, count is 4. So I need to count down here in order to put the data into this data structure. And item number is going to be my index into the array of stock. So just to be absolutely clear, I've got count traveling down this data structure and I've got item number that's going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way to 8. 
So the first thing that I need to do if I'm working with files is I need to link a variable within the program file choice to the address of the file or well, that's its value so I need to link to the external file then I need to open the file for reading or for writing then I need to in this particular case I'm going to read from file until end of file that's what EOF stands for end of file and I'm going to put it that's all the data into temp data so at the end of that I have achieved that I've just read in all the data and I've stuck it into the variable called temp data so that's that line put it into temp data and then I close the file so file handling steps make the link variable to external file open it up do the biz and then close the file the next thing I want to do is I want to work out how many elements will be in my array and this is where I took the number of words in temp data and I divided it by five and uh, the div is an operator that allows me to get the whole number Part. So the number of words was eight, uh, 40, and if I div 5, that gives me my 8, and I put it into the number of stock items, and then I split my temp data by return. So that allows me to go from here to here. That's my number of words in temp data, 40, div 5, into number of stock items. So that's eight and then I split my temp data by return and so it looks like this it's now a one-dimensional array it's split it up from being like this it's split it by that return character so in fact there are more uh, elegant ways of doing this you can split by tab and so on and so forth but I thought for the purposes of this demonstration I would just keep it simple so the next thing I want to do is I want to make sure first of all that I do have some stock items and then I want to transfer it across from temp data into my data structure called stock item. So this is the part of the program that is allowing me to go from here and I'm transferring this data from temp data across into stock item so I'm making sure that I do have some so I'm saying if number of stock items is more than zero and I'm putting zero into count and if you remember I'm using count to count my way down temp data so this is a little clunky but I thought I'd do it like this so that you could uh, it was a bit more transparent so item number is counting from 1 up to 8 and for each thing that I piece of data that I pick off temp, temp data I'm going to add one onto count to make my little count move down temp data so the first one goes off into stock item item number and then if you remember the field name you put in square brackets in live code with quotes around it move down in temp data, put the next piece into num in stock, move down, then price, move down, and so on and so forth. So this is going around for item number is 1, so we'll get the five fields for stock item 1. Item number is 2, so we'll get the five fields for stock item 2, and so on and so forth. So we get the eight stock items. So let's just see that work. I'll click here and clear the fields, load the data, and I want to see it in the field, so I'm going to display the data. And I, that's quite an important point, is that this load data simply transferred the data from the external file into main memory 
and I was organizing it so that I thought of the data as being in a data structure called stock item. So this is still behind the scenes, if you like. Uh, to actually display it in these fields, then I have to... And there it is there. I've I just displayed uh, three pieces of data because I wanted to fit both things on the screen here. But you can see my hats come in. Um, and I just made the text... I'll just show you how I did that. Um, on my text formatting, I, I just changed the format of the text a bit. Um, so it's not picking up any formatting from the file. So let's have a little look at, uh, well, clear fields was simply putting empty into these three fields here. And display data I've carried stock item, that's the name of my data structure, over, I've carried it over as a global variable from my load data. If you notice, I've got that up here. So all the data that I've put into stock item and my number of stock items, because they're global, I can see them on this button. So my stock item uh, array is carried over. I've got my little variable counting round for the eight stock items so that can be local and I'm putting stock item at item number and then again the field names go in square brackets with quotes and I'm putting those into the fields. The last button I'll show you I've got save data and again because I'm saving out of the data structure called stock item, I need to carry those over as global. I'm writing back out the file, so I'll need a local variable to hold the uh, address of the file, and I make the link. I open the file up for writing, and then I work my way through the elements of stock item just writing the data out to the file and then I close the file. So make the link, assign the address to the variable, open the file up, do the biz, close the file and that's it. Thanks for watching.